What's up guys, it's Endymion and today I want to dive into the mysteries behind the power of the dragons and their influence over the lands between from their churches to the secret behind Dragon Communion. And I will also show how From Software has evolved this concept from their previous games. So anyway, let's begin. The dragons within the lands between are easily some of the most powerful things you can face with the ability to fly, crush their enemies with their massive size, and use their immense breath attacks to incinerate their enemies. Not to mention, dragons are just cool as hell no matter what story or world they're based in. But there's one group of dragon-like beings called magma worms that I was always wanting to know more about, so naturally I went looking for answers and the results are interesting to say the least. To first understand the concepts of dragon Communion, let's look at the seal which states Formless Drake Blood Seal with a Dragon Communion Crest. The sacrificial devouring of the heart gives power. Indeed, Dragon Communion is too primal in nature for the term incantation to be appropriate. So, the power to wield the might of dragons is apparently something beyond that of even magic, according to the seal. It's like you're wielding a force that is wholly unique to the dragons themselves, but in order to obtain this power, you must first kill dragons and then devour their hearts. The dragon Dragon Heart states, Dragon Heart seized by a dragon tracker, riddled with gravel stone, this grotesque organ continues to beat vivaciously. An offering used in the Dragon Communion, consume a dragon's heart at the altar to make its power yours. While a terrible and savage looking thing, the heart has a peculiar beauty to it. The dragon heart says it's riddled with gravel stone, which is essentially the scales of the dragon, and by eating the heart, you're able to wield the immense power of these creatures. The powers vary from spewing scarlet rot to fire and even golden beams of pure energy upon enemies, which is all kinds of badass. The power of the dragon is incredible, but like anything, it comes with a weighty cost. In the south of Limgrave, you can wander upon a man named Yura who explains that while eating Dragonheart's grants power through communion, it also riddles the user with a terrible curse in return. Eventually, through this communion, it's revealed that those who partake in the devouring will lose their humanity and suffer for eternity. But what does that mean exactly? Well, that's where it gets interesting. In certain locations across the map, like Gale Tunnel for example, you can happen upon massive dragons that wield large swords, which is odd since dragons, while warshipped, were never considered to be civilized enough or needing of weapons outside of what they're naturally born with, which is why the magma worms are so interesting and unique. And it turns out, they hold the answers we seek. The magma worm scale sword states, Curved greatsword wielded by magma worms. The shape resembles a dragon's jaw and is covered in hard scales. It's said these land-bound dragons were once human heroes who partook in dragon communion, a grave transgression for which they were cursed to crawl the earth upon their bellies, shadows of their former selves. So it's confirmed that the result of seeking the power of dragons leads to a curse in the form of becoming a malformed dragon-like being yourself. And as the magma worm scale sword states, States, these warriors were cursed to crawl on their stomachs for eternity, never being able to stand upright or return to their former lives. The result of seeking forbidden power seems to be the cost of devolving oneself into a monster, which makes me wonder if our chosen tarnished would eventually reach this fate themselves. It's most likely that this would be the case in the end. The fact it's stated that the warriors who sought the power were transformed, it makes me wonder how many would be tarnished who sought the Elden Throne were ruined by their actions to seek strength through Dragon Communion. But this concept of seeking the power of dragons and it having a cost isn't unique to Elden Ring as From Software has shown these ideas in the past. For example, we have Sekiro, where the curse of Dragon Rod happens when the use of resurrection is abused, leading to the power of resurrecting being paid by the various characters around Sekiro himself, and it also halts quest progression too, which makes you feel like like crap every time you die like an idiot knowing some poor guy is now coughing up blood and in pain cause you went and got yourself killed. Another great example of dragons and their cost is in Dark Souls in the form of Seath the Scaleless. Seath was born without the scales like other dragons meaning he would not live eternal and in order to save himself, Seath showed Lord Gwyn the secret weakness of the dragons which was lightning and although Seath succeeded he ultimately damned the dragons and it cost 
cost him everything in the process. So this idea of dragons and their power being abused and then punished is a common concept within From Software's games. However, upon many of the various draconic spells, they all state one thing, and that is that the power of the dragons is an overwhelming power. This could mean that the unique force of the dragons was meant for their kind only, and it's pathetic when you realize that even though a dragon must die in order for one to obtain their power, the warrior who gained the power would ultimately become one themselves, meaning the amount of dragons in the world would basically remain unchanged. But I like to think that the reason why the dragon's power transforms one into a dragon themselves is to ensure that their unique powers are never appropriated and stolen from them to further another group. This way it ensures that the power of the dragon stays uniquely with them alone. What's also weird is that when you go to any of the Dragon Communion churches, you can usually find a big dead dragon encircling the temple shrine, but the smaller dragon statues, like the Dragon Church west of Limgrave shown here, has all the statues with their heads missing. So maybe a Tarnish who did the communion realized what their fate would be and in retaliation destroyed the churches to showcase their dismay over this inevitable transformation. Another interesting point is that if you consume enough dragon hearts, you your character's eyes actually become dragon-like, showing that the transformation is now inevitable. I wasn't able to get footage of this myself, but I found an image from Blood Ronin Gaming's YouTube channel showing a tarnished with this effect, so I guess this particular tarnished is already screwed. Out of all the creatures within the Lands Between, the dragons are easily the most formidable, even during their prehistoric reign with Dragon Lord Placidusax, their power can be felt throughout the land as they remain to this day, some of the world's most dominant apex predators. So the next time you decide to partake in Dragon Communion, just remember that one day your Tarnish 2 will become one, doomed to crawl for eternity, seeking the heat of the world like embers chase fire. And that, my friends, is the tragic story of the magma worms and the price of Dragon Communion. A little bit of a simple video this time around, but interesting nonetheless, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and thanks to my patrons for their continued support. I'm Endymion, I'll see you in the next one.